What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode this is episode number 206 and yesterday we are returning with a brand new season and I can't believe I am saying this but our 10th season of career mode is about to get underway and start today as we will begin our first full season back at Bramwell Lane after returning to Yorkshire halfway through our ninth season in the career mode and I, I honestly I just can't get over it so to start today's episode off I just want to say this this is episode number 206 right 206 for those of you that are still here and watching right now thank you so much I, I honestly just thank you seriously thank you 206 episodes and we are back with a brand new season today and I literally can't wait to show you the season opener with Sheffield United the old school thumbnail is back the old school good times are back and as we begin our 10th season with the transfer market open the question was how much money has the consortium given us it's £112 million for the new season. I have not used a second financial takeover. This is a natural budget that they have given to me. The board have given us £112 million for the new season here at Sheffield United. We returned back midway through season nine and we had a great first return back to Bramwell Lane. Finishing in the top four in the Premier League, winning the Europa League, winning the EFL Cup. Let, let's just pretend that the FA Cup never happened. But either way, a fantastic start to our life back at Bramwell Lane. However, for the new season, after giving us £112 million, what have the board also said to me? You can have all the money, mate. But here are the objectives for the new season. Win the Premier League. Win the FA Cup. And you saw it there in the objectives overview in my continental success objective category. Win the Champions League. Oh my goodness gracious me. The consortium believe that now is the time that Sheffield United take the next step and win the Premier League and the Champions League. And a treble in my first season back at Bramwell Lane. I should say my first full season back at Bramwell Lane. I, I mean, seriously, I mean, I know that in our past two seasons in the Europa League, well, our only two seasons in the Europa League, we won the trophy in both. We went all the way in both seasons, back in season four, and of course last season in season nine as well. But to win the Champions League? What? Seriously? I mean, the squad is, I don't, don't get me wrong, the squad is really, really good. You know, it's a fantastic squad. As we know, we've got one of the best goal scorers in world football over the past seven seasons. We've improved it really nicely uh, when we came in halfway through last season. And again, we've got £112 million to use. There's a lot of money in the budget as well to bring in a couple of really awesome players that can give us a chance of doing that. But, I mean, seriously, you know, my, my hope was what we would have is a budget of around, I don't know, £80, £90 million. Pounds, and then the board say, OK, win the FA Cup, that's doable. And, you know, possibly win the Premier League. I, I don't know whether we can. I'll probably target a top two, top three finish this season. Definitely not falling outside the top four. That would be a catastrophe. But to win the title, OK, I can see where they're asking us to do that because we do have one of the best sides in the division right now. But to win the Champions League in my first season back here, my first full season back here at Bramwell Lane, with this side, they've only played a season of Champions League football, which was season five, when, of course, we had left to join Roma. That's a lot to ask for and a lot of pressure on my shoulders as well. And why is that? Because as we know, I'm a failure in the Champions League. You know, you can talk about all the domestic honours I've won out in Europe and also last year winning the EFL Cup with Sheffield United too. But in European competitions, Champions League, we've had, what, season five, season six, season seven, season eight. Four seasons of Champions League football. The best I've ever been able to do is a semi-final place. I am not good enough in the Champions League. Yet the board think that I am good enough. The board believe in me and they believe in this Sheffield United team and they believe that with the money they have invested, we should win the Champions League. Can we do that? Listen, I, I don't think so. I mean, I'm going to give it my best shot, of course, don't get me wrong, and I'd love to reach the Champions League final for the first time in my managerial career, but that's a very, very tough ask of me there. Very tough indeed. But I'll give it my best shot. Better give it my best shot. I love this team. The team love me. 
let's see what we can do in our first season back. So, yeah, for new signings with Sheffield United, we're over £100 million in our transfer budget for our first full season back here at Bramwell Lane. As we know, the two boys right now playing for Bayer Leverkusen, Ivan Tony's sidekicks, Oliver Shaw and Barry Walsh. After the financial takeover, the board told me I can only sign one per season. So who was going to come back for our second season here at Bramwell Lane? Was it going to be Shaw or was it going to be Walsh? Well, whilst we could do some more creativity through the middle of the park. I had to go with Ivan Tony's younger brother, Oliver Shaw. These two have had so many amazing moments for club and country throughout nine seasons. And Ivan needs his bro back with him. Ivan needs Ollie Shaw in the left background. We've seen over the past couple of years with Bayer Leverkusen and also a flair from Madrid as well. He can score goals now. He scored his first goals in professional football out in Spain. Last year with Leverkusen had a fantastic season with so many assists and a few goals to go along with it as well. So Oliver Shaw, I wanted him to return in this 4-1-2-1-2 diamond narrow. He's got no one playing in front of him on the left-hand side of the wing, which as we know is the reason why he wasn't as successful during his time at Roma and Atletico Madrid. And after agreeing a deal of £100 million with Bayer Leverkusen, and Ollie gets the plane over to Sheffield. I sit him down in my office and say, Ollie, welcome home, son. Welcome home. Local lad through the academy. Oliver Shaw, welcome back to Bramwell Lane. I could only choose one of them this season, but let's be honest here. We knew it was going to be Oliver Shaw. As much as I like Barry Walsh in the team, we knew it was going to be Oliver Shaw. I might ask the board for special permission to get Barry back in January, but in the summer, I was only going to sign one and I had to bring him back. He's one of the world's best players and he's back where it all began. Oliver Shaw, welcome back to Bramwell Lane. His stats, absolutely remarkable. Remember when we just got him out of the academy? We nurtured him from, what, a 60, what, 64, 65 overall left back. So great to have him back. And now that he is back at Bramwell Lane, the question is, what number is he going to wear here with Sheffield United? Well, in the top right, there will be a poll for you guys to vote on. I'll let you guys make the choice. In his first season in professional football, when he came out of the academy, he wore number 28. So, so is he going to go for the OG throwback 28 number or is he going to keep the number three that he's worn from season two onwards? The question uh, I'm going to ask you guys, what number does he wear? 28, the OG throwback or the number three that he's worn throughout the course of his career? I'll let you guys make the choice. There's a poll in the top right for you guys to vote on. You're my marketing managers. What number is Oliver Shaw going to wear in this Sheffield United team? For now, he'll wear the number three as he's worn that since season two. But uh, Shaw is back. Welcome home. Molly back. He's a, he's a local lad. He came through the academy. He's back here at Bramwell Lane and I think he's going to absolutely thrive in that left back role. Again, with no one playing ahead of him. We, we talked about it before. The key to Shaw's success is having no left mid or left winger in the team. He needs all the freedom down that left flank to be the only option down the side of the pitch. He's going to have that in this team. I think he's going to chip in with an awful lot of assists this season for, Oliver, uh, for, uh, for Ivan Tony and for Elliot Harris as well. But uh, still following the signing, we did get a bid here for Crean, our backup goalkeeper, which we accepted from Leon. Uh, last season, he complained on two separate occasions to me that he wanted more first-team football. And of course, here, he's not going to get it. He's behind Sam Hill, who, as we know, has been absolutely superb since we returned. So I'm OK letting him go. We might have possibly undersold him for £41 million, as he's still a young goalkeeper, but, uh, but uh, already 85 rated. However, he's not going to get the first-team football he wants here, so he's always going to complain. So I'm fine letting him go. The deal was over the valuation. And I'll take the cash and look to reinvest in another backup goalkeeper. And also we have, we have bids here for uh, Lukumi and also Cuisance from Barcelona and Arsenal as well. We negotiate with Barcelona for £13 million. Pounds, I think it was for our centre-back and as for our French central midfielder, we negotiated with Unai Emery, who's back at the Emirates Stadium after all these years, for £27.5 million. Pounds. I'm fine with that, as these are two ageing players that I'm fine selling as we look to make this side a bit younger and a bit more athletic as well. But uh, speaking of goalkeepers, we did get a bid here for Sam Hill, Andrew put a bit of 65.9 mil and I just blocked the offers. I said absolutely no chance is Sam Hill going to the Bernabeu. How good, I mean I've said it so many times man, I promise I'll shut up now, but how good was Sam Hill last season man? He's going literally nowhere. He's our number one this year. And also Soyuncu is going to one of our former career mode teams. Roma put a bid of 25 million pounds for him in. He was on our transfer list and I was okay letting him go to the Stadio Olimpico. So there's going to be a CV partnership at Roma 
uh, the, uh, the Champions League winners of Soyuncu and Ben Godfrey. How cool is that? But as you see here, confirmation, three players have been sold. Quisans for 27.5 mil, Lukumi for 30 million, and also Crean for 41 million pounds. So just under 100 million pounds raised there for those three sales. I wouldn't mind you keeping hold of Quisans. We just got so much depth in the central midfield position right now. He was the most expendable player, so I was okay selling him and to get him for just under his valuation. Oh, just that one year left in his contract. I was totally fine letting him go. But of course, after the sale of Korean, we did need a new backup goalkeeper. And I didn't want to sign someone that was young and wanted first team football and was always going to be complaining that Sam Hill was getting picked ahead of him. I wanted someone a bit more senior, a reliable safe of hands for the bench and someone to mentor the young players in this side as a dressing room leader. And there was only one name I was thinking of bringing to Brownwood Lane. I wanted to bring him back. We've brought back Oli Shaw. We've brought back a load of the other Sheffield United players as well. It's time to bring Dean home as well. The boys are back and Dean is going to return. As you see, confirmation is Soyuncu does go to Roma. Real Batiste would not let him go on the cheap though. Valued at 25.5 mil. I thought we'd only have to pay around 27 to 28 million for him. Considering the fact he's 31 years old right now. But in the end, we had to spend a whopping 30 seven million pounds to bring him back however he has developed so well during the time we spent at Brownwell Lane together and now out playing in Spain as well but Dean as much as he loves the sunshine in Spain he loves the Brownwell Lane faithful even more and as you can see here we agree a four-year deal on 41,000 pounds a week and Dean Henderson is back at Brownwell Lane as the backup goalkeeper for Sam Hill and this is this is what I wanted you know someone senior a dressing room leader but someone that's played for this club before, knows the club inside out, loves the club and always puts in a good shift and is a safe, reliable pair of hands for the bench. You can't really go wrong with Dean Henderson. 31 years old now. I don't think he'll even decline that much during the time he's here because goalkeepers don't tend to decline as quickly as outfield players in FIFA career mode. So Henderson is back, 86 rated, two ratings lower than Sam Hill and nine years older as a backup goalkeeper. I don't think he'll complain that much uh, lack of game time as he'll be playing his final years in professional football here. And Dean Henderson as a backup for Sam Hill, mentoring the young academy graduate. I just, I absolutely love it, man. The boys are back and you got to love it. But following that, I had to show you this as well. Now, I was looking for a new centre-back here and I was going down my uh, Global Transfer Network scout report for the CB area. And look what's happened here. Emmanuel Aya, who was picked up by my scout, of course, who we had with Roma, Atletico Madrid and Leverkusen. I was thinking about bringing him back. He's gone to Chelsea. Emmanuel Ayer has just agreed terms to join Frank Lampard's Chelsea. Now, in our final year with Bayer Leverkusen, he was a little bit poor, a little bit shaky, failed to come off that long-term ACL injury he had back at Atletico Madrid, and now he's decided to sign for Chelsea. I was on the verge of bringing him here to Bramwell Lane, and he's gone to partner up with Frank Lampard and his Chelsea side, our main rivals of the series. Can you believe it? Aya is off to Stamford Bridge. A hero has turned into a villain. Oh, Emmanuel. He was sick of the criticism I was giving him at Bayer Leverkusen, and he said, piss off, docs. I'm heading to Stamford Bridge, where I'll be loved in West London. So, yeah, Aya has gone to Chelsea. How about that? But I did want a new centre-back after the sales of Soyuncu and Lukumi. Right now, we've only got Tadebo and Nicholas Wilson playing centre-back. So I wanted someone else to come in and play centre-back in this team. I was a backup or taking Tadebo's place to play alongside Nicholas Wilson. And there were two names on the shortlist I really wanted. First, Leandro, who, of course, we had with Bayer Leverkusen, a six foot six giant Brazilian who we absolutely loved in our year at the Bayer Arena. He was so goddamn good for us. I'd love to bring him back uh, with us in this series and bring him to Brownwell Lane as well. I think the fans would love him. But the other target I was looking for was Brian Gonzalez. This is a Uruguayan who I believe is the Diego Godin region, currently playing for Bayern Munich right now. And whilst he is two ratings lower than Leandro, and six inches shorter as well as he's only six foot. I must say, I do like the look of him a lot. The deal we negotiated for Brian was a lot better than the deal for Leandro as well. We had to pay 65 million for the Brazilian, whereas for Brian it was just 40 million, uh, sorry, 42 million even, 43 million even, third time lucky, uh, plus Leto as well, who right now we can't seem to sell. So in the end, I decided to go for Brian, you know, mainly because the deal did seem a little bit better financially speaking. Also, we don't need uh, this guy to 
to be in the first 11 as well because we've got Tadebo who was really good last year and of course Nicholas Wilson as we know is never going to lose his place in the centre back role because he is so good whoever we were going to bring in either Leandro or Gonzalez is going to play on the bench so Brian was the cheaper option it also gets rid of Leto's salary as well as so we don't need him now that Shaw is here and Kapich is going to be our understudy for Oli this season and I also want someone a bit more different as well you know we've signed a lot of former players as we know and I thought bringing in a different uh, new gen slash regen might be a bit more interesting so yeah Brian Gonzalez signs for 43 million pounds and sadly I couldn't get the uh, the article to show him holding the shirt here but doesn't this year Uruguayan look really aggressive I don't know what it is about him, but he just he looks really, really aggressive, tough as nails. The sort of guy you would not want to fight in a bar. And uh, I mean, you wouldn't want to really, really want to fight anyone in a bar, to be honest. But uh, he, just, he just looks like such a, such a tough character. He looks really, really aggressive. Four star weak foot, three star skill moves. And again, he reminds me of Pepe. Real Madrid's Pepe. I can't really put my finger on it, but he just looks tough as nails, this guy. Like a real hard bastard. Old school centre-back, and that's what I wanted. So, yeah, he's a new player. We've never used him before, and Brian Gonzalez is in. It'll be a backup to begin with for Nicholas Wilson and Tadebo, but we're going to nurture his talent. He's in his early 20s, and I'm very excited for him. He looks so aggressive, tough as nails, a real hard boy. And, uh, yeah, Brian, welcome to Bramwell Lane. But that is going to end today's episode of Career Mode, guys. So, big Thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy today's season opening, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode. Well, 38.5 million pounds of the budget, and still some more players to sell. There's more signings to come. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for the next episode very soon.